next thing I want to talk about today is property of function being monotonic or strictly monotonic. To understand this concept, we need to understand the following. So we have, for example, some arbitrary function that looks like that. So this is a function and we have some arbitrary interval here and here. Let's say it's x1 and this is x2 and they have values of minus 2 and plus 2 here. And uh, correspondingly the y values will be minus 1 and 1. So this will be y1, this will be y2, because we're interested in these two points. So the function is said to be monotonically increasing on the interval. If, for example, we can see here x1 and x2, which is equal to minus 2 and 2, we can see that obviously x1 here is smaller. And correspondingly, y1 and y2. Here we can also say that this is y1 and this is y2. y1 and y2, which are equal to minus 1 and 1. Also, minus 1 is smaller than minus 2. If we have here the same sign here, this function is called monotonically increasing on this interval. And it's strictly increasing if we don't have here the equal sign it will be strictly monotonically increasing. But what if we have different example like this? So we have x and y axis here, and we will have a line looking like this. And here we have an interval from here to here where this is, will be minus two, one, and according y values one and minus half. So this will be x. One, this will be x2, this will be y2, and this will be y1. Here we have an opposite picture because if x1, which is corresponds to minus 2, is definitely smaller than x2, which is equal to 1. But function outputs y1 and y2 are equal to 1 and minus 0 0.5 here which makes y1 larger than y2. So in this case, you see we have different signs here. They are not the same. And if we have different signs here, so it was x1 was definitely less than x2, but function output of y1 is larger than y2. So this function is called monotonically decreasing or strictly monotonically decreasing depending on the sign that we have here. This is also interesting. You can just see on the line, if the line is decreasing, you see the y values of this function are decreasing with the time. The more we go to the right, you can obviously see that it's decreasing. If we look at the graph, you can definitely see that this one is strictly monotonically increasing and this one is strictly monotonically decreasing functions. And let's move further. The next thing about functions that I want to remind you are extremas, which are minima and maxima. A function f is said to have a global maximum, or in plural, if it's several points, we call them maxima. If all of the values of function are less than or equal to the value of function at the point x, some functions have global maximum and some functions don't. It always depends on the type of a function, but some functions which I have global maximum, what is the maximum? Maximum is maximum possible value of a function. And sometimes we don't have a whole picture of function. We can just take a small interval of it. And if on the interval of range of value, we can find the largest x value there, then it will be our local maxima. If we use a notation, we write them as following. So this is our maxima, this is minima. And um, it means that for all values of x are in domain, this will be like a largest point. And this is local minima because we have some certain interval i, and in this interval, this point has a maximum value. 
Same goes to the minimum. This one is global minimum. It's like a minimum possible value for the function. And uh, this one is minimum value on a certain interval that we're interested in. For example, let's take a function which is x squared plus 2. The global minimum of this function will be y equal to 2. This is the value of a function when x is equals to 0. So our x will be the global minimum and it will be equal to 0. Because any other values of x, we will get value of y larger than 2. So at this point, when x equals to 1, we will have something larger than 2. The function doesn't have a maximum since the bigger the x value is taken, the bigger the function gets. So the function of fx equals to square root of x has global minimum at 0, which is the value of function at point x equals to 0. So y is also equals to 0 because this function, we only have positive numbers and the smallest possible x value here will be 0. So this will be our global minima. But again, as a previous example, this function doesn't have global maximum. Since the bigger the argument x becomes, the bigger the value of the function gets. So local and global maxima and minima are called extrema. Let's have a look at two more examples. So this is a function f1 which is 3x plus 2 and this one is f2 of x which is equals to minus 2. So doesn't matter where we get our x values, the y will always equal to minus 2. So let's have a look at these two examples. This function here, since it's a line, has no global extreme values and uh, this function here is constant and minus 2 will be here both minimum and maximum value of this function. Next we will talk about inflection points. Before talking about inflection points, I want to show you example of concave up and concave down functions. So the first one is concave up. If the slope of a function increases as x increases, then the function is concave up as in the first example and it will look like this. And um, if the slope of a function decreases as x increases, then the function is concave down in that region. It means that the slope of the tangent of the function decreases with increasing of x. So it's the second example. So the inflection points, the points where the graph of a function changes between being concave up and concave down or vice versa. One of the example here will be x to the power of 3. This is the simplest example of a function with an inflection point and here the inflection point will be the origin where x equals to 0 and y equals to 0. It is the exact point where a function changes by being concave down to becoming concave up. So another example will be this kind of graph as it's shown here, the blue graph. And uh, the inflection points of sine of x will be this red dots here. It will also coincide with the roots. The inflection points will be the same points at the roots of sine function. It means it's minus 2p, minus p, 0, and etc. So here you can see that a point where the function was concave down and after that point it became concave up and uh, vice versa. It was concave up and after the point going through the origin it became concave down and so on. So this is basic idea of inflection points. Next property of uh, some functions in mass is a symmetry. The symmetry in mass is a property of an object to be able to be divided into two identical mirror halves. So symmetric function could be even or odd. So I will show you an example of both. Even functions are symmetric about y-axis. For example, x squared and uh, the absolute value. So if we look at the graphs, you can see they're symmetric about the y-axis. If you just divide it here, it will have two equally looking like mirroring each other objects. 
and odd functions, for example, like 3x or x to the power of 3, they are symmetric about x-axis. So if we divide them here, then we will have two halves that are mirroring each other. This is the difference between even and odd functions, graphically. In both cases, we require that domain is symmetric about the origin of the x-axis. So they both go through the origin point, which is 0, 0. In order to find out whether the function is odd or even, or neither odd or even, it's not necessary to build a graph each time, because it could be time-consuming. So the function is called even if for all x in its domain, the equation f of minus x equals to f of x is satisfied. So for example, we have here this function, and we want to know if it's even or not. In order to find out, we need to find f of minus x of this function. So instead of x, we just put the minus x. It will give us minus x to the power of 3 minus minus x squared. Here we will have minus x to the power of 3 plus x also squared. And we also can simplify it by moving minus outside, which will give us x to the power of 3 minus x squared. And you know the square of any negative number will be positive number, which here we will have x to the power of 3 minus x squared. If we look here, this is exactly what our function looks like. So it's equal to f of x. So it means that f of minus x is equal to f of x. That means that this function satisfies this equation. Then this function is called even. What functions are called odd? The function f is called odd for all x in this domain if the equation f of minus x is equal to minus f of x if this equation is fulfilled. Let's check, let's have a look at another function, for example, this function here. Let's check whether it's odd or not. So what we're going to do here, we again going to find f of minus x. f of minus x, same as we did before, minus x squared minus 2 divided to minus x plus minus x to the power of 3. So if we simplify it, this will give us just x squared minus 2. And here we will have minus x minus x to the power of 3. And if we just also simplify further, we can leave it like that. And we have minus here, it's x plus x to the power of 3. We can also just put the minus outside of the fraction and put it in front, so it will be x squared minus 2 divided to x plus x to the power of 3. And we can see here that this is equal to our function, and with a minus sign here, f of minus x will be equal to minus f of x. So it means that this function here is odd function. We have also third type of function which are neither odd or neither even. This is an example of such function. Let's say we will think that x is equal to 1. For x equal to 1 we can calculate fx and f minus x and again compare them. So fx here will be f one and instead of x we just put the one here so it will be one squared plus one which is equals to two so f of one will equal to two and f of minus one will be equal to minus one squared minus one which will be zero which means that neither of this equations here can be fulfilled so f of minus x is not equal to fx, and same as f of minus x does not equal to minus f of x, so 
this function is neither even nor odd function.